Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm thrilled to introduce to you Cassandra De Anne. She is our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner. She is also certified in human design and gene keys. I am very fond of both these modalities. I believe they are exceptional systems that can reveal so much. They can offer immense value that, uh, in terms of information that can guide us towards our higher potential, greater well-being, deeper understanding of who we are, why we came, what are our gifts and qualities, what are the challenges, such rich systems. I believe both were channeled, right, by their uh, creators. Yes. So we can talk more about these. I'm really excited about this podcast and looking forward to learn about your journey and just feel the beautiful light and excitement that is always oozing from you when you engage with something that you're clearly passionate about, Cassandra. So welcome. How are you today? Oh, thank you so much, Julia, for having me. I am just so excited to be here, a part of this program, a part of this day talking to you here and now. And yes, doing very well. <laughs> I'm so glad. You're really most welcome. And uh, just to mention today is 2nd of April when we're recording this. Um, it seems like everyone is already feeling the eclipse, approaching eclipse energies. Yeah, we can talk about that later perhaps, but a very potent time. You know, before we started recording, we had a little chat about what it feels like to become certified and then be listed on the recommended practitioners page on the galacticastrology.com website. Would you like to share a little bit how that has been it's over a month or even two since you've been certified and listed is that right yeah it's crazy how the time has just flown by and I have enjoyed this so much I have had multiple people come to me and I just absolutely love this work I love connecting people with people on this level and, you know, revealing and sharing with them, you know, their soul's journeys and where they've been and, you know, connecting them to those aspects of their galactic heritage. It's just brings me great joy. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. And really well done for following your passion, following your heart. You know, both Gene Keys and Human Design are such exceptional modalities. Working with two of them combined, what was the impulse that you had when you first time came across the galactic aspect to our journey? And when was that moment? Can you share? Yeah, absolutely. So the story is quite interesting because I had, I grew up in a religiously abusive home and didn't really entertain anything, you know, to do with spirituality. And I experienced a spontaneous awakening. And upon that, my first sort of introduction to the spiritual realms was through astrology. And I loved astrology, but one day, one of the astrologers I followed uh, was studying in human design, and that was the first time I heard about it. When I first crossed my path, I was not too interested at first, but as I've grown to learn, if the universe wants you to know something, it will continue to kind of put it in front of you. And so ultimately, I ended up looking up my human design chart, absolutely falling in love with it. And when I had my awakening, I tend to be a very logical person normally, and I liked the system feel of human design. I was slowly spoon fed the galactic pieces um, from the get go, really, of my awakening experience coming, stumbling upon someone who said, get a Dolores Cannon book and told me what my store, my soul origins were, but I wasn't quite ready yet. And so I went down the path of human design, which allowed me to really understand who I am. And that kind of opened the door to the gene keys, which is a little more esoteric. So once again, kind of putting my foot in the water a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, 
and experience incredible, unexplainable experiences and transformation through the deep work of the Gene Keys. And the universe kind of brought me back around to my galactic connections. I stumbled upon Ulrika Sullivan on a podcast and I listened to her share astrology and it was just, it lit my soul up. It was like nothing I ever had heard and I kind of felt completely drawn to galactic astrology. I've, I felt like it was calling me back towards the, the fulfillment that I was looking for, the deeper levels that I wanted. I just am at a point now where my soul is like, I say, yes, I, you know, I want to know all the things. And it's just been so exciting. It lights me up. It inspires my inner child to connect and learn so much about not only my own soul's journey, but, you know, also seeing how incredibly accurate it is and how much it resonates for the people that I am able to share this with. Oh, amazing. You know, when it really feels so strongly right, you know, you can't say no to life when it guides you this yeah. way. Um, what a blessing to experience that kind of clarity and certainty in following something that is presented to you. Um, I notice you've mentioned that you know yourself perhaps more so in the past to be a very logical person and you like the systems. However, I have to comment on just from me observing your beautiful contributions in our private Facebook group for quantum cell guidance practitioners, you shared such rich divings into whichever star system you commented on, the journeys that were kind of opening up for you. It seems very natural, you know, like it's a really um, rich psychic ability that seems to come to you so naturally. So I was surprised by that comment that you feel more logical, but has this always been that way, that kind of psychic intuitive side, or did it kind of start coming uh, online after your spiritual awakening? It definitely started coming after because of my upbringing. I was very conditioned not to have any sort of sense of self. Um, and it was, I mean, the people in my life pretty much carried me. Um, and I didn't trust my intuition. None of this, all of it was foreign to me. When I had my spiritual awakening journey, it was like a muscle that over time kind of strengthened and I, to the point where, you know, it takes a lot surrender. Right, you know, to be able to connect to those intuitive no, you know, notions, you have to trust yourself, trust the universe, trust, you know, the process. So it's been honestly a journey um, to get there for sure. But one thing why I love galactic astrology, considering these two sides of myself, is I found that my process of reading what I love doing is connecting to the Akashic records first and having all those downloads and then looking at the chart. And then when you see all the dots connect in the perfect houses and the perfect signs and, you know, you can just trace the storylines it just feels like a warm embrace from the universe to me. It just feels so magical. I absolutely love it. But it has been a journey getting there. My, I would say my strongest sense is clear audience. That was what came on first. And I would just get sort of one word. Um, and I wouldn't really understand, but over time, um, and actually, a year to the date of my awakening journey, I had I ended up having a download where I had a full fledged running voice that I had access to, and my clear audience gift is probably my strongest for sure. <laughs> I'm so glad you're sharing the process of the gradual opening of the psychic abilities because many people um, expect for it to just, you know, once you set the intention to start working with your with your clairs, uh, whichever the extrasensory perception you focus on, 
uh, people seem to be really frustrated when it's not coming along but you have to kind of commit to it and and um, almost prove uh, how much you want it and are you really committed because there comes great responsibility with with something like this too so i'm glad you persevered absolutely there is one question that comes through strongly in terms of the strong religious background and i always come across the religious dogma against astrology how strongly it is still broadcasted that it's um it's a tool that should not be used that it is against god's will how did you work with those two yeah. opposing belief systems absolutely that's a really good question i think that while i would love to say that i sort of came through that realization on my own I feel like a lot of it was my openness was because of my spontaneous awakening. I just wasn't at a conscious level where I could felt permission to explore those things. Yeah, because how I was raised in fundamentalist Christianity, it was, you know, that's of the devil. That's not good. That's not something you toy with. But when something unexplainable happens <laughs> to you, you kind of have to reevaluate and look at everything. And my actual awakening process, astrology was a big part of it. The actual day it happened. So it was June 9th, 2021. And Is it okay my to share the chart now? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the eclipse took place in Gemini in my ninth house. And so how I feel, you know, this was a solar eclipse. So when we're talking solar eclipse, we're talking about new beginnings, sort of faded or destined moments in which we are brought back. The universe brings us back on track. This means sometimes new beginnings. This can mean doors closing that force us into different paths. And so for me, this was a, my mind essentially was like blown open. It was in Gemini and my ninth house. Gemini, I always feeling this not only as like topics of communication, but I also really feel Gemini as a very curious energy that sort of can entertain, have that open mind of considering multiple different perspectives, ideas. And then when we look at the ninth house, you know, looking at our beliefs, philosophy, those deeper things of how we consciously process things. And it's interesting because normally, you know, Sagittarius rules the ninth house, which is wisdom. There was just so many layers to this. And I just right time, right place. And it just opened my mind. And that particular day, what was taking place was reflection through actually astrology. And so I had um, never listened to a podcast and I decided to pull up a podcast. And for whatever reason it so happened, I found one that was talking about the 12 houses through two very young college girls that it was presented as a very easy to digest basic level. But what I was processing, it just, I can't even explain it. It was beyond what a usual comprehension would be of someone that was just introduced to these topics. It's like, it felt like it rose within my essence of knowing. And the next day, my every friends, my husband, everybody that saw me were like, who are you? You talk <laughs> wow. different. You talk different. Your energy feels different. You do not feel familiar. And it was quite an experience of just completely reshaping my life. Mm, wow well i'm so intrigued and so fascinated by looking at this chart because what i'm also seeing is that this uh, solar eclipse created a grand square pretty much yeah. the activating your natal mercury in pisces and yeah. your neptune was kind of on it too so yeah really special yeah uh, bridging both the human mind and the higher intuition and uh, activating your natal Saturn in 12th house or oh, 11, kind of on the cusp of 11 and, and 12. Yeah. 
in yeah. Virgo, trining your ascendant with Pluto on the ascendant. My goodness, <laughs> that's intense. So uh, really incredible. Oh, and of course, then the Mercury also was squaring your natal Neptune in Sagittarius. So just so many different points were connected at the same time, really powerfully activated. One more thing I've noticed here that uh, transiting Uranus was on your vertex, which yeah. is oh. kind of on the cusp of the eighth house, which is kind of connected to astrology, oftentimes as a tarot deeper yeah awakenings also linked to perhaps awakening memories from past yeah. lives because it really feels so natural that it comes this all this comes to you so naturally so it, i feel like you're remembering uh something yeah. before and um here we have i wanted to mention the part of fortune but it wouldn't be as powerful as the vertex point i thought the part of yeah. fortune here is activating grand trine with your uranus and mercury on the MC. So you kind of naturally have that grind trine there with your midheaven, right? Uranus, yeah. Mercury on midheaven. Yeah. Amazing. Really powerful. <laughs> In terms of galactic uh, astrology of the eclipse, you also shared that. So we have this awakening chart. And one thing I noticed yeah. when I scrolled through it, well, first of all, the eclipse was conjunct the stars of the Orion and in particular Bella Bellatrix. So here we have Mercury also conjunct Bellatrix in Orion. So solar eclipse was on the stars of Orion. And then in your natal chart, you have Orion stars sprinkled uh, throughout your yeah. chart. And in particular, Saturn is square Bellatrix in the 11th house, Saturn in Virgo. So to me, that speaks potentially previous incarnation, previous lifetime where you were involved in some sort of teaching even as a priest potentially even potentially being against astrology <laughs> this is what's coming <laughs> through here where this time is the other way around and i heard these stories so many times or it could have been uh the opposite way where you were actually uh using you know deeper wisdom from within your own being but the dogmatic social systems were against you where you felt suppressed and so perhaps yeah. you experience an echo of that in your current incarnation and you are guided to overcome that this time which feels more accurate or and bo even both could have been the case because we have so many previous incarnations so i would say that it has been very challenging for me, and when I say challenging, I speak of it as on a soul level, I know a big part of my journey of evolution is feeling comfortable to come forward with my higher knowledge, knowing sense that has been a journey <laughs> for sure. Well, you have, sure. you have um, Alpha Hydra star, uh, Alpha Art conjunct your north node i believe yes yes so it is um, associated with uh, wisdom carrier someone who carries the deep feminine wisdom wisdom of the universe within their own uh, coding within their own kind of soul memories and a few other alignments there that i feel maybe the later story is more accurate for you where you have been doing this for uh, many incarnations being the seer the guide the healer the teacher and uh, you are learning to, you're healing the wounds that so many of us experience by being prosecuted and all that yeah. so i'm so glad yes. you came out so beautifully so wonderfully <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can you share with us how did you navigate external environment, any perhaps of your family members and their reaction when you claimed this new state of being uh, and expression? Yeah. Actually, my family disowned me a year before my spiritual awakening, not for the first, but the second time. And I have come to great peace and understanding of this situation. I think that in life, we, we get so caught up in the polarity of things. And we sometimes forget on a soul level that when we come here, we come for the purpose of evolution to have these experiences. 
And so a lot of times when I share my story, it can be hard for people to relate or understand. I have great love and gratitude for this experience because it's created and turned me into who I am today. And I think that that is testament to why this happened twice, because I think the first time I ended up falling into old behaviors, what was comfortable, you know, what was safe, you know, in trying to allow that heavier dynamic or that controlling narrative to sort of hold me within a reality that felt familiar to how I was raised. But the universe was like, oh, no, no, you know, you wanted your soul on a soul level. You wanted to be where I am here here today. And because of that, there were certain experiences that were shaping the opportunity, the perfect ingredients to get where I am here now today. So because of this, I feel like I was given, you know, the two opportunities. And by the second time I was disowned, um, before my awakening, we tried after nine months of no contact to regain connection. It was not working out. And I decided that I just was, it, it wasn't the path for me anymore. And I experienced such great freedom. I did a lot of healing forgiveness. Later, while we are no contact, my mother has seen my work online and commented how it's of the devil and I should know better. Um, but, you know, it's one of the things that is so beneficial, I think, to learn is that first off, we on soul levels choose our journeys. Two, we are here to evolve and grow. And three, also we can't do others' evolution for them. We can do ours. <laughs> and so I can't do the work for my mother. The best I can be is my authentic expression of self in the world. And those that that may help by hearing my story, then that's beautiful. That's how it's meant to be. But we're not really here to save or rescue anyone. They have to sort of do that work for themselves. We don't have any contact. It's been over four years now. Thank you so much for your honesty and the beautiful integrity and higher wisdom that you share with us. I hope it'll help heal any viewers' trauma uh, related to perhaps similar story. I would just like to add that with astrology as a tool, it can be used both ways for mm -hmm. well-being of others or to harm others. And yeah. as long as our heart is pure, our intentions are pure, as any good tool, we can do a lot of good. And uh, I love seeing in our community the focus on helping people understand their inner self in order to evolve, in order to make this world a better place in their own unique way where they can rise and shine versus using astrology with the hyper fixation on predicting the future. I really don't like using this tool for that at all. I love the beautiful unfolding of life itself in its magical way, you know, when things come to us in their own divine timing. So, you know, like any tool it can be used both ways. I appreciate you sharing your journey and you can feel how there is no trigger and how beautifully at peace you are with who you are, um, how, how you walk this path ahead. So, you know, you can really feel the difference between someone who still holds resentment and someone who is free. So I command you and congratulate you for that. It's an inspiration to, to witness that. Well, shall we look at your beautiful website? Sure. Yeah. And wonderful job. You have this beautiful sense for, for what is nice, what looks good. And yet again, <laughs> there is a conjunction to Hades star. <laughs> I see it over and over again. So let me share the screen. If our viewers go to CassandraDeAnne.com, you can see your beautiful website. Do you know how awesome you are? 
Yay. And I have to say, every person that I know who reached a point where, where they recognize their own awesomeness, their own divinity, they are the most wonderful cheerleaders for others to recognize the same. These people, you know, you're naturally able to be genuinely happy for others, shining and being wonderful. So it, it's so great that you, you. here <laughs> is the tab that interests me the most. So people can book their human design session, galactic astrology. There's galactic resources page. I love that. Um, people can book their reading and you also have your podcast and your book. Where would you like to start? <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> what do you feel most um, proud yeah. of from all these? Well, things? you know, my book is currently being manifested. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's not there yet, but it does share my awakening story and my religious challenging upbringing. Because when I was going through a lot of this, there it is difficult to find resources that share. Um, I think that religious, toxic religious homes can be some of the most difficult to navigate out of those circumstances. So I'm working on that one. I hope to see it in publication in the next year. I think the thing I'm most excited about presently is my galactic resources because I started to um, realize I wanted to have information available to help people kind of connect after the reading with the different storylines and these uh, races. So I've started this process to where I have channeled uh, visuals and included information through my own connection of Akashic Records. And in this also, there's some information coming from some of my favorite resources and books as well. Um, so I love those. Um, I'm pretty excited to keep adding. It's like little adventures I get to go on when I learn more about these stars. And then the Galactic Astrology link is new to my site to where I give a little bit of information about what it is. I talk a little bit about, you know, our cosmic beginning to the different services that I offer, Beautiful. which I would say my favorite right now is probably the relationship reading, the galactic relationship. Wonderful. And that's so interesting that you say that because your chart has uh, placements in the seventh house, uh, which is the house of relationships. Isn't that fascinating how we, how we navigate towards something that is active through astrology? Uh, my journey in life has been finding who I am related to others, you know, in a codependency, people pleasing, a lot of those things can be challenges with having your son in the seventh house of where are you versus others. And I've really enjoyed finding the balance between, you know, those things. And most of the work I do, such as in human design, I really don't gravitate towards relational charts, but in galactic astrology, I found that I really enjoy reading Akashic records of past relationships because they are eye-opening to themes that we are reliving, presently working through. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I have to share the screen again and show those charts because something just um, revealed itself. So here we were talking about the seventh house. Uh, your yeah. natal sun is on descendant and your natal Pluto is on ascendant. So there's a very strong and powerful opposition, transformational experiences, very deep and intense experiences too. Where your sun shines in your chart is usually our... Uh, natural we naturally gravitate towards that area of our life and that's where we shine <laughs> um, our identity our, our path and purpose kind of usually points to that direction for me my son is in the 11th house house of higher ideals and ever-present optimism that I have but in connection to humanity to the collective and 
I, I always think about how can we support human collective evolution. So yeah. that's what my son is. But um, I was curious about your fourth house because your um, you know, upbringing was very challenging and transformational and helped you eventually blossom to who you are today. So your fourth house is actually empty. But if we look at the ruler of the fourth house, and this is something I was talking about in my recent podcast on our ancestral galactic astrology. So your fourth house is ruled, uh, is in Capricorn, the cusp of it. It starts in Capricorn, so it's ruled by Saturn. And your natal Saturn is on a cusp, uh, almost at the end of the 11th house and the beginning of the 12th house. And interestingly, your natal Saturn is squaring Orion star Bellatrix. So there is a connection, I believe, to previous incarnations where your family members that gave you birth actually possibly potentially well, I'm not sure if I can say it because it's uh, a strong statement. Uh, we can decide if we leave it in or take it out. Uh, they yeah. may have taken your life before in, in prosecution and now gave it back yeah. to you. So karma has been restored and that's why kind of there is ending and you, you're you not meant to almost yeah. be together because there was a uh, karmic death that has been cleared. The, the It's the Bellatrix, the Orion star that is significant here because the eclipse that caused your awakening was conjunct this star. And that star mm. then was, you know, uh, squaring the natal Saturn and yeah. uh, Mercury in Pisces, which is connected to religion also, to religious beliefs. Neptune is there too. Yeah. So I, I um, you know, this really looks like by the book validation of ancient stories story uh, or, or previous incarnation story in uh, connection to everything we've shared and it's likely that the bloodline of the souls that were uh, causing difficulty was connected to orion in some way um mm, yeah one way yeah. Or other, so i sometimes wish that i would be able to look at my parents galactic astrology i don't have the information but um what you said i feel like it resonates especially considering the past lives i know where there has been a lot of challenge the only exception i've found in my records is i believe that this is what i have you know read in my records and what really resonates with me is that my relationship with my actual mother is pretty new and that we had joined or met through a life where I was in Octurin and I agreed to reincarnate with her this life to sort of assist or help with her process we'll see, you know, that's, you know, her journey there. But I know my father for sure. We've had multiple rounds that all have been having similar themes of challenge. Um, that would make so. sense um, because there is a, one of the, you know, sun moon alignments, moon is in Capricorn. And I, I want to ask you if, who was the more, uh, kind of masculine expression and who was more feminine expression within your family dynamic do you know yeah so i would my mother was more controlling so um sun in aries it, perhaps or, or moon and capricorn could be both actually she, well i know she was a sagittarius sun that part i do you know that i do know but um it's interesting because on one of your videos i saw you refer to the energy of the father and mother through the houses looking at the fourth and the tenth and i definitely feel the energy of like the the fourth house mother 10th house more the cancer for me that's cancer um my father was protective and you know more likely to nurture mm -hmm. um and it's interesting in my clients charts when i've Thanks. looked at their fourth and tenth it often is really good representation of the parentals um, I love that. And I'm so funny. glad that we bring that in so that people uh, really take a deeper look at is it moon or is it sun that represents mother, father. So yeah. I also looking at galactic astrology, it gives us some clues inclining that moon is the representation of your father's um, soul connection more so than the sun, because from what you shared, 
your natal moon is opposing series A, which is connected to lifetime, connected to higher wisdom, spirituality in one way or another. It's sextile crooks, a crook star, also strongly connection to history with religious organization system, and it's square Corvus Algarab. Also, whenever I see that in a chart, there is usually a story of a um, prosecution or some sort of wounding in relation to strong dogmatic beliefs that are blocking the natural psychic intuitive insights of others. So pretty fascinating too. Uh, one thing uh, in my galactic astrology and studying it, a life that I stumbled upon that was very transformative to me is, as I shared earlier, feeling like it's okay to use my intuition has been a challenge. And especially earlier in my awakening, I would say things, I would have experiences, but I would say, I promise I'm not crazy. I promise I'm not crazy. And, you know, I looked at it as like, oh, you're just like this oddball, you know, the odd, you know, person. And I had this life that I stumbled upon in which it was earlier in my journey where I was captured and my psychic abilities, my natural abilities were used for service to self through another species. And this particular alignment is actually squared, which to me feels like karma in my 11th house, which I felt I had this moment of feeling like I am in a sense repaying a karma of using my abilities for good with the collective, you know, to uplift, to use them for positive. Like it's not about being that person that, oh, I have these abilities, but it's actually a service in which I am sharing um, in this life. So it helped me a lot with feeling like I could shift my perspective on, on how I show up in the world. So powerful. Thank you. One more question that comes to mind is before your kind of spontaneous spiritual awakening, what was the few years leading into that? Because I believe that when something like that happens, when you have this spontaneous opening and almost like this beautiful resolution of karmic connections that were so potently strongly holding us limited I, I believe that usually happens when we actually do the inner work leading into it and i hope you will kind of validate that here have you been working on on your inner frustrations and triggers kind of taking personal responsibility for your inner experience of those challenging relationships what was it like what was your journey and focus the year few years leading to the spiritual spontaneous awakening Mm, that, I would say about five years prior, I had an experience that was sort of mystical, where ever since I was a child, I had, I was seeing every night pretty much a presence in my room. About five years prior to my awakening, I, that was the first time I kind of like considered the possibility of something outside of religion because ultimately a, I ended up seeing a visual face and I did not know who it was and stumbled later upon a picture and realized that it was my grandfather and which we never talked about family. We were very disconnected from all family. I didn't even know if my grandfather knew me. So the, I ended up kind of considering the possibility of something outside of religion. A friend encouraged me to go see a psychic and the psychic within five minutes named that he was there and his presence was strong. But the first time something bad happened in my life, I fell into that religious narrative. Oh my gosh, what did you do, Cassandra? You opened the door to the devil. You now are going to have issues with possession and your life is going to be falling apart. So that was, you know, shut that door. I honestly was fumbling a lot through life. I focused all of my energy through my career. At the time, I did not realize that my way to soothe my wounding from my upbringing was through validation. I am a creative. I worked in the wedding industry. I was there 10 years, never had a negative comment, never had anybody dissatisfied. 
I received one person say something negative about my work and it felt like at the time my whole world crumbled. I did not understand why, what was going on. And it was probably two months after that is when I had my awakening. It did feel very out of the blue. <laughs> um, there, there, after, there, there goes my theory out of the window. <laughs> and I've been told that the situation is a little unusual. A lot of times there's, you know, can be a death or something very tragic, but it just felt like my sense of what I was so desperately clinging to for security and safety was shaken. And with that, now the work I did afterwards was quite intensive. Lots of deep, deep healing and unlocking things. It was you. unusual. <laughs> yeah. And actually that made me realize and remember the many stories of spontaneous spiritual awakening or the Kundalini awakening that people have yeah. that just happens so unexpectedly and so random and really just uh, changes their trajectory completely and you, you don't have to do the inner work before something like that happens so it can be can be either or yeah uh, but it, it's neat <laughs> yeah brilliant i can imagine you would be fabulous wedding planner amazing wedding planner i can <laughs> yeah. i've done i've done that for three years i believe Aww, yeah i think i, I recall it, so. hearing that through yeah yeah, yeah. it was mm -hmm. also in a beautiful setting and i absolutely loved it yeah. okay great awesome. well is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience before we close cassandra this was beautiful <gasps> I think the only thing that I would love to add is that a lot of people, when they hear about galactic astrology or like why we're going down that path, well, first off, I definitely believe that we're in times where things are changing as we move forward to the future. But I think one thing that I just really love about galactic astrology is understanding that, you know, sometimes I think we kind of see just this life and we, you know, get so wrapped up in this. And I just love the idea to really comprehend and understand that these storylines, whether it's collectively or personally, that we're playing out, come from somewhere. And by understanding the galac our galactic history and understanding the journey our soul has been on, you know, that this is why I love this work. This is why I feel this work is so important because often these understandings really help us see a 360 view of everything and the things we're going through. And offers such I, I signed up from your course and one of the things you said is you will experience transformation mm -hmm. and it could not have possibly been more true <laughs> and I just absolutely love it I'm so glad thank you so much for sharing this journey with us I feel excited about the potential of you connecting with many more wonderful people having amazing magical experiences and covering incredible stories you know, we will uh, watch the space. I believe we can subscribe to some of your social media channels if you go to yeah. your website. So I'm um, happy to Love stay it. connected. Super well done and best of luck. Thank you all for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Much love.